If you're interested in making your first $100,000 in your investments, stick around. I'm going to be sharing exactly how I did that and the steps that I took. Hey guys, it's Justine, your host of the Debt Free Millennials channel, where we help millennials crush debt, achieve financial confidence that leads to more fun and fewer payments. If that's you, go ahead and click that red subscribe button so you never miss another video from me and join the family of well, we're getting close to 100,000 subscribers, I hope. That is the next big milestone for this channel, and so I hope you join the family. Today we are talking about investments and how I was able to grow from literally negative net worth of $35,000 in debt to 100K positive net worth using my investments specifically. So this actually all started back when I paid off $35,000 in student loan debt in two and a half years, making an average of $37,000 in income at that time. I paid off all of that debt in 2014. After that, I was really looking for ways to, one, bolster my emergency fund, but two, what types of investing accounts should I be opening or should I be maximizing on top of what I already had? At that time, I had an employer-sponsored retirement plan. I started with a 401k, ended with a 403b, and then ultimately rolled over all of that money into a rollover IRA with Vanguard. So while I was paying off the debt between about 2012 to 2014, I was contributing to the 401k with just only 2%. <laughs> I really had no idea what I was doing. So I remember literally looking over at my office buddy over at her desk and we looked at each other and she was older than me and I was like, what are you putting? She was like, I don't know, what are you putting? Uh, 2%, yeah, that sounds great. And that's what we did. We literally had no advice, no advisor who was coming and telling us what to do. We literally just pulled a number out of thin air. That is so backwards when I think about it, where workplaces should be talking about investing and how to do it, especially for those entry level positions, because we just didn't know what the hell we were doing. When I moved over to working for my university in their marketing department, they offered a 403B with a mandatory contribution of five and a half percent. So that's what I ended up doing at the end of my debt-free journey. Then. Once that was locked in, I started looking at outside investments such as a Roth IRA. A Roth IRA is an amazing retirement vehicle in which you can contribute up to $6,500 for the year 2023 after that, uh, next year, it's probably going to go up. So you can literally Google Roth IRA contributions for 2024, 2025. And what I did was I worked on maxing that out because you can contribute to that fund, get taxed up front, and then that money grows tax-free. When you go to withdraw that money during retirement, you also take those withdrawals tax-free. It's a great tax-advantaged account and one that I definitely think everybody should look into. In fact, I've done a whole video on explaining what a Roth IRA is, the ins and outs, the pros, the cons. Check it out up here in the cards. Once I became ineligible because there are income requirements, once I phased out of that, then I could really work on some other things. So I mentioned that I rolled over the 401k and the 403b to a rollover IRA with Vanguard, and then I opened up a SEP IRA with Vanguard, which is a retirement account for self-employed individuals. I wanna go ahead and give you a peek under the hood at my Vanguard dashboard to show you exactly what happened, what amounts that I was earning, and how I got to 100K. All right, so initially I had opened up my Roth IRA with an outside financial company, financial advisory firm, and when I realized how much I was being charged up front, I kid you not, it was 5% up front 
commissions that I was being charged on my money and then it was 1% every year after that. Guys, do not sleep on understanding your investment fees because that is the one thing that is really going to hinder your growth and progress with your investments. Understand what are those annual fees? How much are you charging, being charged by your financial advisor? Have them give you a dollar amount. I bet they would be hard pressed to give you that dollar amount because they don't want you to see exactly how much money, because they, they'll tell you percentage, but they won't be able to give you that dollar amount because they don't want to lose your business. So that side note, I did have probably maybe even more than the 12K where you can see the starting point because I opened up the Vanguard account in 2016, took the, old, the Roth IRA from the old financial advisory firm and dumped it into Vanguard and said, I'm going to manage this myself. So that's what really kicked this thing off in 2016. Keep in mind, this is about two years after I became debt free. And I think in between that time, I, I paid off the last student loan payment to this point, I was building that up, the Roth IRA with that outside firm, and then also doing some savings on my own. So as you go, this is the green line that I've earned, and then you can see the purchases or the contributions that I've made into the account with the yellow line. So I just stayed steady the entire time. I did not time the market. I set these up on automatic contributions. I had the Roth, I had the rollover IRA, and then when I became self-employed, Right around 2017, 2018 is when I really started to work on that SEP IRA. So things are looking great. 2019, I had about $76,000. I'm getting close in 2020, right? When the pandemic happened, actually this is when the pandemic happened, right? When everything shut down, I lost money and then immediately bounced back and hit my first 100K in 2020. So between 2020 and 2016, I started with 12,000 and then I had over 105,000 just by staying consistent, investing often, investing early. I'm thinking of my friend Jeremy with the Personal Finance Club who always signs off with, as always, invest early and often and it happened. So it took me four years to hit that goal. And keep in mind, I did not have any debt payments at this time. That is why paying off your debt early and as quickly as possible is going to help with the momentum and get those contributions really maxed out. This is also just my own personal journey aside from Kyle's. Even though Kyle and I work on our finances together, and this is also part of his pot of retirement, he's got his own 401k that he's working on, and then of course we have our cash reserves saved up. We have a lot more than just what you're seeing here. It's important to know like this was all me, which feels good. Like. <laughs> I did all of this by myself. I also look at it of like, how, how am I pulling this together with my partner? How are we making this impact even more? How can we like triple down on our efforts here? So in four years, that's what happened. And then you can see since then, honestly, since the pandemic, it's really kind of gone gangbusters, right? Like it just keeps going and going. Um, and I've almost doubled the amount of my investments in just three years. So literally another four years is gonna go by and I'll, I'll have doubled it, hopefully. And I haven't been very consistent with contributing to the account more recently. So that is how I did the 100K inside of Vanguard. Now, I bet you're wondering, what exactly am I invested in inside of this Vanguard account? Well, I really followed the steps provided by J.L. Collins in his book, The Simple Path to Wealth. Really started with any employer sponsored plan. I moved over to the Roth. Once I was ineligible for the Roth, I went for the traditional IRA and then the SEP IRA. So now that things have changed with my business and things have kind of moved, I'm having to kind of rework those steps. So now I'm either gonna go back to the traditional IRA and really work on maxing that out or really working on maxing out my SEP IRA. So those are the accounts that I have. Now if you're wondering about specific funds, 
I'll let you in on that secret as well. So my investing platform is with Vanguard. It has the lowest expense fees of any financial brokerage company out there. Like call me out on that if you find anything less than what I'm about to share with you and things can change on a dime. Maybe somebody comes and undercuts Vanguard. I don't know who that's gonna be, but you just gotta wait and see. So the first thing that I'm invested in is VFFVX, the Vanguard Target Retirement 2055 fund. The fund fees for this is 0.08%. This is actually one of the higher ones that I'm invested in. The investment minimum is $1,000. If you're going to invest directly with Vanguard, you're going to see higher minimums for you to invest in. So in order to open an account with them, you have to have a minimum of $1,000 or a minimum of $3,000. And then after that, you can buy per share or just contribute a monthly amount or percentage. I'm actually thinking about getting out of this fund because I actually had one of my viewers tell me that, well, hey, you're actually invested in all the same companies as the Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund. And so I was like, oh, and he said, yeah, you're actually paying more for this because look, it's kind of in these different funds but then I'm also in the Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund, which has an expense ratio of 0.04%. The idea is when you are reading these fund sheets or these tear sheets, sometimes they're called rate sheets, you want to make sure that expense ratio uh, percentage is the lowest it can possibly be. 0, 0.0 anything is amazing. So again, the investment minimum, there's $3,000 to get started, or you can purchase an ETF at the price of one share. That's actually an even better way if you're just getting started with Vanguard. I am not a financial advisor, nor am I a certified financial planner. I'm just doing what works best for me because I have a vested interest in my investments and I really study this stuff hard, which is why I opted to self-manage this. I think anybody could self-manage, absolutely. Investing is not complicated when you take the time to just know the different types of funds and what you're invested in. What's cool about this is the Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund is a favorite among the personal finance community. Fire enthusiasts, those who want to fi be financially independent and retire early, are crazy about this fund, and this is one that JL Collins talks about a lot. All right, so another key piece of information when you're looking at these funds is not only the expense ratio, but also their performance over time. Now, because we are looking at investing as a long-term game, you always wanna think about it long-term, I tend to look at the since inception date. So in the past 23 years, it's earned 7.83% rate of return. In the past 10 years, it's done amazing, 12%. The past, actually, year to date has been amazing. It's had a 20.32% rate of return. The VTSAX or VTI uh, is the ETF version of this. This has been such a game changer for my investments and one that I would definitely always have in my like basket of funds that I'm invested in. Another one that I like to have on hand is the Vanguard 500 Index Fund. The Vanguard 500 Index Fund tracks the performance of the S&P 500. And so you're going to say, see it replicate the performance of the S&P 500 over time. The expense ratio is 0.04%. And let's take a look at the performance and fees. And then again, I'm looking at since inception, 7.55%, 10 year, 12.62%, year to date has been amazing. But again, I'm gonna buy and hold this for as long as I can until I'm ready to retire. And this is kind of what you're looking at. Something that is way more on the conservative side, and this is a fund that I use for my brokerage account. My brokerage account is used for my down payment or any kind of savings, long-term savings goal where I need to withdraw the money before retirement. So this is where VBTLX comes into play. The expense ratio is 0.05% and the risk reward is a, at a two. This one has not been my favorite lately because the performance has just sucked. So you can see year to date, 
is 2.18%. This is actually lower than what I'm earning currently in my high yield savings account with Ally. Since its inception is 3.21%, which ideally would be good in normal economic times, but because inflation is so high, this fund really hasn't been performing as well as I like it. So I've actually been experimenting with moving some money into a Vanguard uh, settlement fund, which is their money market account and just building up the cash reserves specifically for the down payment fund. This is not a fund that I'm using actively for my retirement investing. I just thought it was a good one to show you that as part of my overall performance and what you saw on the dashboard of that, of the entire account balance, the VBTLX is also part of that. So that's exactly how I earned my 100K, my first 100K. I would really encourage you to check out JL Collins' book, The Simple Path to Wealth. I will leave a link to his Amazon book page below. And I just worked his steps. I started with my employer-sponsored retirement plan, contributed up to the match, then I stopped, then I moved on to the Roth IRA, tried to max that out until my income was too much in order to be eligible for that, then I stopped. Now moving on to the traditional IRA and then ultimately maxing that out. But I think I'm gonna go back to the SEP IRA because my contributions to the SEP is way more than the limits on the traditional IRA. At the time of this recording, that contribution limit for the year is 6,500. Now, another important note about the Roth and the traditional IRA, you cannot contribute 6,500 each in the year to both accounts. It's $6,500 across the board. So you could put, 3000 to the Roth and you know the the difference over to the traditional IRA. But if you're following the steps from JL Collins, you'll really want to work on maxing out one first and then the second one last. If you found this video helpful or inspiring or motivating to get you to just think about what's that first item on your to-do list, I'm betting it's having something to do with your employer sponsored retirement plan. If it's inspiring, go ahead and hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe and join the family. We are committed to growing this channel to over 100,000 subscribers. So click that red subscribe button. I'll catch you in the next video.